This is lecture number 188. For quite a while, I've been looking at the anecdotal historical background that defines human rights law, especially the part that is very contested. We are going to look at it using the historical background and this one will not dwell on the structured aspect of the international human rights, the treaty and charter organs, its implementation and enforcement, regionalization, and its domestication in the constitutions of various nations. However, let us first of all question ourselves as follows. What is it that we know about human rights? Why do we speak so much about it in our world today? And what are the issues, what are the disputes that we can allegedly claim as belonging to human rights? This is going to help us as a guideline for the learning outcome. This notwithstanding, we must admit that human rights has got so much to do with the past contested events. The past was full of revolutions, American Revolution, French Revolution, English Revolution. But besides such revolutions, so much was happening when it comes to the violations of the human rights, the rights that belong to all of us, to each one of us in equal measure and they are underogable, they are undisputable, and they cannot be delegated or given. They are not what we refer to as legal rights, rights given to you by the statute, or they are not neither customary rights, rights given to you by the virtue of the customary and traditions that are within you are emit. They are inborn, they are innate. They are within our nature, as John Locke had written on the natural rights, the right to life, the right to liberty, and the right to own property. These are the very rights that we can use to make reference to the human rights that are considered here as universal, but that also is contested. Some thinkers argue that rights should be relative and rights should be cultural and should be seen within context. And I want to begin here by saying that already in the 13th century, King John of the United Kingdom had already come up with a written document known today as Magna Carta. Magna Carta was to deal with the human rights violations and I would only mention a few of them. First of all, the introduction of habeas corpus. That means, it is a Latin word, it means simply have the body. Habeas corpus is to deal with the detention without trial. That is the right to be heard and the right for both parties to be heard before the determination of the judge and of the court. Another one is to deal with the issues of trial by ordeal that was in the ancient days in England and also the due process, the fair trial as well as the natural justice. All this put together, already the United Kingdom had got an idea of how to develop and generate what would later on be called human rights. But this was not everything about it as in the 17th century and 18th century enlightenment period most of the philosophers and thinkers, the legal scholars, and those who thought 
around the doctrines and theories of human rights, such as John Locke in his natural rights theory, referring himself mostly to the right to life, right to liberty, and right to own property, are already forming the conceptualization towards the universal human rights. Indeed, the question of colonization is already contested part of our human history, which we cannot arguably dismiss. The colonization of the United States of America by the British colony, colonial power was contested by the residents, the colonized. When the colonists were subjected to taxation and heavy prices and cost and getting relatively very little income and the principle of no taxation without representation came especially from here that you have your voice where your money is and you must be represented. The breaking out of the American English War in 1776 was caused by the declaration of independence by the Americans from the British colonial power, imperialism. This is a reaction by the Americans against what was seen by them, quote unquote, as oppressive power upon them, an imposition upon them. The writing of the American Constitution in, in 1780 by the designer Thomas Jefferson and his co-founders during that time had already a very strong feeling towards human rights. And this one is captured in the Constitution of the, of the Republic of the United States of America. And it defines to us also the question of the natural rights that are not given and cannot be acquired. They are with the people and individuals have them in their nature. And in that case, again, there is the question of France. The French kingdom back then in 1789 when the people revolted against the regime, the monarch, and the aristocrats, and the spirituals, claiming their rights and declaring the rights of man and the fundamental freedoms of the citizens, and capturing the three fundamental principles, namely liberty, equality, and fraternity, which till today defines and underpins the French constitution. Back to the United Kingdom, where already the Magna Carta was in operations, we will find that equality before the law was part of the Magna Carta, which of course subjected the king to the parliament. And that again brought about the constitutional monarchy. But all this in this regard, we need to appreciate in this kind of foundational lecture, the involvement of the United Kingdom, France, and the United States of America in the historical development of human rights, of which today is known to all of us in all angles of the world the question of slavery. The practice of slavery and slave trade could be traced back even to the biblical era. The time Joseph, son of Jacob, was sold to merchants from Egypt to go there as a slave is something alive to our memory. However, still, slave trade in its full picture in the 17th and 18th century 
capture the minds of the philosophers and thinkers, especially those who are thinking in lines of rights, as something that was not supposed to be done. Immanuel Kant, a German philosopher, in his famous maxim, man cannot be used as means to an end, but man is an end in himself, is already alluding to this kind of slavery or looking at a human being as an object that is supposed to be used to achieve an end. John Locke, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and many other thinkers at that time had documented a lot of writings in a manner that such writings informed the basis of different constitutions, including the Constitution of the United States of America. The basis of the human rights and its development comes up with this question of the tremendous violations and incredible abuse of human rights and lack of respect for human rights. We have seen the colonization of America by the United Kingdom, which was disputed and ended up in a bitter warfare. And that was not enough. America had again to fight and claim its rights and protect its people and the rights of the people. Great Britain extended its effort towards Australia after failing or falling off with America to Australia and New Zealand, where the indigenous, namely the aborigines, had to lose their livelihood, their land, to the aliens, the colonizers. The same had happened to America, where the Indians, the indigenous, lose the entitlement to their beautiful land. These are all disputed facts that we can have as evidence to justify the foundational sources of human rights as we know it today. Slavery is what brought about the untold discrimination, killing, genocide, and human abuse. Africa at some time in history had its sons and daughters forcefully and in chain transported across the Atlantic to America and they did not go there at their own volition as the Europeans migrated into America. They went there in chains and they are still there and they are found in Latin America and Caribbean islands, but also in the United States of America. The so-called African Americans today have got profound history of slavery, profound history of violations of human rights, and we don't need to go far. Dr. Martin Luther and Mr. Malcolm X all have given us evidence of what happened and the feeling, the sentiment among these humans. President Lincoln Abraham in 1862-63 his emancipation declaration to abolish slavery in America brought untold change but it was a revolution as well which brought about the American Civil War. Those who are in support of maintaining and having slavery, and those who are for the freedom of the slaves, the unionists versus the conservatives. We are still alive to the fact that Africa in the 19th century, almost near the end, was massively colonized by the European imperialists. But that colonization indeed 
is in itself a violation of human rights because this is illegal occupation of a people and their territory. Empower, empowering yourself with the wealth that is stolen from the colonized. Because the colonizers did not only come to develop the colonies into a people, but also to smuggle out the natural resources, but also whatever they could consider as profitable and wealth building for themselves, not for the people. And that also can be allegedly grouped as a controversial and disputable or contested area of the historical event in the development of human rights. Where was Africa during this time all around, along? Africa was existing. Africa was there. African people, their territory were there. They had their differences, their fights, of course. They had their history, of course. They had their social life, of course. They had their challenges, of course, but they were there. The settling down of the Dutch settlers in South Africa came at a historical moment in 1652, when the Dutch settlers, on their way to the Far East, found themselves stranded and shipwrecked. And the Cape of Good Hope became the only hope for them. And the locals, quote unquote, the Africans' residents, welcomed them using the African principles, Ubuntu principle, to make them feel at home. Later only to turn into enemies and when the settlers started battling with the locals, the natives, the Zulu, and sending them out of their rich land and claiming the entitlement to those lands, only to dominate over them by the Boers. And during the colonial period, the fight between the British and the Dutch in South Africa that brought untold warfare in the 17th century, killed so many and left so many wounded and damaged. After dominating this population, the British and the Dutch together instituted the apartheid policy, a system that is full of discrimination based on the color of the skin, racial discrimination, between the blacks and the whites, and shoot to kill, and the blacks were the losers of it all. Blacks were put in Bantu stands, whereas the settlers were enjoying the wealth of the land. This in disregard, we need again to engage with episodes of war, World War I, World War II, but who named them World War? They were not World War. Because if you call war a World War, that means even Africans were involved in declaring that type of war, participating in that type of war with interest, and also concluding that type of war. But all this is not the fact. In reality, the World Wars was started in Europe, but by extension captured America and the colonies that involves India, Australia, and the entire Africa and other parts of the world that were already under the European imperialism. We are alive to the fact that the colonized suffered damages and losses in a manner that must be redressed. But most importantly, the human rights of the people to force the war into the people or on the people in disregard of their human rights and entitlements, their dignity, their fundamental freedoms. In disregard of this kind of illegal occupation of populations, quote unquote, the Africans, 
the wars of liberation were always fought against, oppressed by powerful colonizers that were advanced in technology. And we are alive to the fact of the Mau Mau warfare in Kenya, wars of liberation, Maji Maji rebellion in the neighboring Tanzania today that used to be Tanganyika under the Germans. Such kind of wars of liberations were thwarted using violence and these human approaches that were in violation of human rights. Contrary to this, Congo was given as a gift by the imperialists to the then king of Belgium, Leopold II, and many Congolese who were massacred, killed. Ten millions were killed in that warfare. It was a sort of genocide. We are still reminded of the players during those times. President Franklin Donaldo Roosevelt of the United States of America, 1933, and taking his period and time to reshape the new world order, engaged with Winston Churchill, the then Prime Minister of the United Kingdom in 1941, to strike a deal, the Atlantic Agreement, and also to come up with the four freedom speech. Number one, freedom of expression. Two, freedom of worship. Three, freedom from fear. And four, freedom from want. In 1942, the adoption of the UN Declaration that brought about the preparations for the Charter in 1945 is already a document signaling the violations of human rights and how best the world can protect humanity in the future to come. This is what defines the new, new world order by that time. The wife of the president, Eleanor Roosevelt, who chaired the Committee of Human Rights and who worked hard even in publishing human rights and fundamental freedoms by that time, worked and labored around very difficult and contested issues as certain powers and authority sovereigns were against certain principles. Remember that the UDHR was adopted massively by the participants. Members of the UN by that time were only 56, in which 48 voted for the document, and none voted against the document in, during the UN General Assembly. But the ones that abstained, namely South Africa, simply because of the bad policy of apartheid, which they were protecting at all cost. Saudi Arabia abstained because of the freedom of worship, because for them, worship should be obligatory, and no individual is allowed to choose which religion or which faith or which creed to pursue. Russia or Soviet Union by then was protecting that domination over the Balkanic regimes, areas, and domination over the people, and also abstained from endorsing UTHR. This is the world back then, and these are the contested historical events that inform the treaty law, the treaty organs, the jurisprudence of human rights, the practice, the theory, but most importantly also the doctrines. The issues are still there in our contemporary world. Human rights did not start in the past and die in the past. 
did not just start today and will die today, but human rights is developing progressively and prospectively towards the future, the future generations. Today, we insist so much on human rights to an extent that it is becoming even part of the problem other than part of the solution. And this is another debate for another topic. The contested historical events that allude to the abuse of women, discrimination against women, discrimination against certain creeds, certain races, certain ethnic groups, but also things to do with the violations during the colonial period and also during the fight and the struggle for liberation in different jurisdictions. Today, here, when we talk about human rights, let's not forget that Africa has played a huge role in the development of human rights. First of all, in rejecting apartheid and supporting in 1965 the adoption of the convention of the elimination of all forms of discrimination based on races, sex, and religion, and many other issues that Africa itself is proud of. Africa also came up with its own charter under the, the then Organization for the African Unity in 1981. And in this case, we cannot forget our history and our past. This is the much I wanted to share, but this is just to open us up to a better discussions on the contemporary issues and linking such contemporary issues with the contested history and the background of the entire human rights law and how it affects you and how you can go about it. Thank you for watching. Peter Nyango, I've been asked to say something about this episode. Bye for now.